Sai Academy GS Research Center presents audio book of economics class 9th this is page number 29 chapter 3 poverty as a challenge overview this chapter deals with one of the most difficult challenges faced by independent india that is poverty after discussing this multi dimensional problem through examples the chapter discusses the way poverty is seen in social sciences poverty trends in india and the world are illustrated through the concept of the poverty line causes of poverty as well as anti poverty measures taken by the government are also discussed the chapter ends with broadening the official concept of poverty into human poverty introduction in our daily life we come across many people who we think are poor they could be landless laborers in villages or people living in overcrowded jogis in city they could be daily wage workers at construction sites or child workers in dhabas they could also be beggars with children in tatters we see poverty all around us in fact every fifth person in india is poor this means roughly 270 million people in india live in poverty as per 2011 census this also means that india has the largest single concentration of the poor in the world this illustrates the seriousness of the challenge two typical cases of poverty or one case 33 year old ram saran works as a daily wage laborer in a wheat flour mill near rashi in jharkhand he manages to earn around rupees 1500 a month when he finds employment which is not often the money is not enough to sustain his family of six that includes his wife and four children aged between 12 years to 6 months he has to send money home to his old parents who live in a village near ramgarh his father a landless laborer depends on ram saran and his brother who lives in hazari bag for sustenance ram saran lives in a one room rented house in a crowded basti in the out skirts of the city it's a temporary shack built of bricks and clay tiles his wife santa devi works as a part time maid in a few houses and manages to earn another rupees 800 they manage a meager meal of dal and rice twice a day but there is never enough for all of them his elder son works as a helper in a tea shop to supplement the family income and earns another rupees 300 while his 10 year old daughter takes care of the young siblings none of the children go to school they have only two pairs of hand me down clothes each new ones are bought only when the old clothes become unwearable shoes are a luxury the younger kids are undernourished they have no access to health care when they fall ill 
rural case lakhan singh belongs to a small village near meerat in uttar pradesh his family does not own any land so they do odd jobs for the big farmers work is erratic and so is income at times they get paid rupees 50 for a hard days work but often it's in kind like a few kilograms of wheat or dal or even vegetables for trialing in the farm through the day the family of eight cannot always manage two square meals a day lakha lives in a kachcha hut on the out skirts of the village the women of the family spend the day chopping fodder and collecting firewood in the fields his father a tb patient passed away two years ago due to the lack of medication his mother now suffers from the same disease and life is slowly ebbing away although the village has a primary school lakha never went there he had to start earning when he was 10 years old new class happen once in a few years even soap and oil are a luxury for the family study the above cases of poverty and discuss the following issues related to poverty landlessness unemployment size of families illiteracy poor health malnutrition child labor helplessness these two typical cases illustrate many dimensions of poverty they show that poverty means hunger lack of shelter it is a situation in which parents are not able to send their children to school or a situation where sick people cannot afford treatment poverty also means lack of clean water and sanitation facilities it also means lack of a regular job at a minimum decent level above all it means living with a sense of helplessness poor people are in a situation in which they are ill treated at almost every place in farms factories government offices hospitals railway stations obviously nobody would like to live in a poverty one of the biggest challenges of the independent india has been to bring millions of its people out of abject poverty mahatma gandhi always insisted that india would be truly independent only when the poorest of its people become free of human suffering poverty as seen by social scientists since poverty has many facets social scientists look at it through a variety of indicators usually the indicators used relate to the levels of income and consumption but now poverty is looked through other social indicators like illiteracy level lack of general resistance due to malnutrition lack of access to health care lack of job opportunities lack of access to safe drinking water sanitation etc analysis of poverty based on social exclusion and vulnerability is now becoming very common c box social exclusion according to this concept poverty must be seen in terms of the poor having to live only in a poor surrounding with poor. other people excluded from enjoying social equality of better of people in better surroundings social exclusion can be both a cause as well as a consequence of poverty in the usual sense broadly it is a process through which 
individuals or groups are excluded from facilities, benefits and opportunities that others, their betters enjoy. A typical example is the working of the caste system in India in which people belonging to certain castes are excluded from equal opportunities. Social exclusion thus may lead to but can cause more damage than having a very low income. Vulnerability Vulnerability to poverty is a measure which describes the greater probability of certain communities, say members of a backward caste or individuals such as a widow or a physically handicapped person of becoming or remaining poor in the coming years. Vulnerability is determined by the options available to different communities for finding an alternative living in terms of assets, education, health and job opportunities. Further, it is analyzed on the basis of the greater risks these groups face at the time of natural disasters such as earthquakes, tsunami, terrorism, etc. Additional analysis is made of their social and economic ability to handle these risks. In fact, vulnerability describes the greater probability of being more adversely affected than other people when bad time comes for everybody. Whether a flood or an earthquake simply a fall in the availability of jobs. Poverty line At the center of the discussion on poverty is usually the concept of the poverty line. This common method used to measure poverty is based on the income or consumption levels. A person is considered poor if his or her income or consumption level falls below a given minimum level necessary to fulfill the basic needs. What is necessary to satisfy the basic needs is different at different times and in different countries. Therefore, poverty line may vary with time and place. Each country uses an imaginary line that is considered appropriate for its existing level of development and its accepted minimum social norms. For example, a person not having a car in the US may be considered poor. In India, owning of a car is still considered a luxury, while determining the poverty line in India a minimum level of food requirement, clothing, footwear, fuel and light, educational and medical requirement, etc. are determined for subsistence. These physical quantities are multiplied by their prices in rupees. The present formula for food requirement while estimating the poverty line is based on the desired calorie requirement. Food items such as cereals, pulses, vegetable, milk, oil, sugar, etc. together provide these needed calories. The calorie needs vary depending on age, sex and the type of work that a person does. The accepted average calorie requirement in India is 2400 calories per person per day in rural areas and the 2100 calories per person per day in urban areas. Since people living in rural areas engage themselves in more physical work, calorie requirements in rural areas are considered to be higher than in urban areas. The monetary expenditure per capita 
needed for buying these calories requirement in terms of food grains etc is revised periodically taking into consideration the rise in prices on the basis of these calculations for the year 2011-12 the poverty line for a person was fixed at rupees 816 per month for rural areas and rupees 1000 for urban areas despite less calorie requirement the higher amount for urban areas has been fixed because of high prices of many essential products in urban centers in this way in the year 2011-12 a family of five members living in rural areas and earning less than about rupees 4080 rupees per month will be below the poverty line a similar family in the urban areas would need a minimum of 5000 per month to meet their basic requirements the poverty line is estimated periodically normally every 5 years by conducting sample surveys these surveys are carried out by the national sample survey organization nsso however for making comparisons between developing countries many international organizations like the world bank use a uniform standard for the poverty line minimum availability of the equivalent of dollar 1.9 per person per day 2011 ppp dot let's discuss discuss the following why do different countries use different poverty lines what do you think would be the minimum necessary level in your locality poverty estimates it is clear from table 3.1 that there is a substantial decline in poverty ratio in india from about 45% in 1993-94 to 37.2% in 2004-5 the proportion of people below poverty line further came down to about 22% in 2011-12 if the trend continues people below poverty line may come down to less than 20% in the next few years although the percentage of people living under poverty line declined in the earlier two decades that is 1973 to 1993 the number of poor declined from 407 million in 2004-5 to 270 million in 2011-12 with an average annual decline of 2.2 percentage points during 2004-5 to 2011-12 let's discuss study table 3.1 and answer the following questions even if poverty ratio decline between 1993-94 and 2004-5 why did the number of poor remain at about 407 million or the dynamics of poverty reduction the same in rural and urban india vulnerable groups the proportion of people below poverty line is also not same for all social groups and economic categories in india social groups which are most vulnerable to poverty are the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe households similarly among the economic groups the most vulnerable groups are the rural agricultural labor households and the urban casual labor households graph 3.1 shows the percentage of poor people in all these groups although the average for people below poverty line for all groups in india is 22 43 out of 100 people belonging to scheduled tribes are not able to meet their basic needs 
similarly 34% of casual workers in urban areas are below poverty line about 34% of casual labor farm in rural areas and 29% of scheduled caste are also poor the double disadvantage of being a landless casual wage labor household in the socially disadvantaged social group of the scheduled caste or the scheduled tribe population highlights the seriousness of the problem some recent studies have shown that except for the scheduled tribe households all the other three groups that is scheduled caste rural agricultural laborers and the urban casual labor households have seen a decline in poverty in the 1990s apart from these social groups there is also inequality of incomes within a family in poor families all suffer but some suffer more than others in some cases women elderly people and female infants are denied equal access to resources available to the family story of shiv raman shiv raman lives in a small village near karur town in tamil nadu karur is famous for its handloom and power loom fabrics there are a hundred families in the village shivaraman and ariyun thiyur cobbler by cost now works as an agricultural laborer for rupees 160 per day but that's only for 5 to 6 months in a year at other times he does odd jobs in the town his wife sasikala who works with him but she can rarely find work these days and even if she does she is paid rupees 100 per day for the same work that shiv raman does there are eight members in the family shiv raman 65 year old widowed mother is ill and needs to be helped with her daily chores he has a 25 year old unmarried sister and four children aged between 1 year to 16 years three of them are girls the youngest is a son none of the girls go to school buying books and other things for school going girls is a luxury he cannot afford also he has to get them married at some point of time so he does not want to spend on their education now his mother has lost interest in life and is just waiting to die some day his sister and the elder daughter take care of the household shiv raman plans to send his son to school when he comes of age his unmarried sister does not get along with his wife sasikala finds her a burden but shiv raman cannot find a suitable groom due to lack of money although the family has difficulty in arranging two meals a day shivaraman manages to buy milk once in a while but only for his son let's discuss observe some of the poor families around you and try to find the following which social and economic group do they belong who are the earning members of in the family what is the condition of the old people in the family or all the children boys and girls in a family attending schools interstate disparities poverty in india also has another aspect or dimension the proportion of poor people is not the same in every state although state level poverty has witnessed a secular decline from the levels of early 70s the success rate of reducing poverty varies from state to state recent estimates so while that all india head count ratio was 21% in 2011-12 states like madhya pradesh assam uttar pradesh bihar and odisha above all india poverty level as the graph 3.1 shows bihar and odisha 
continue to be the two poorest states with poverty ratio 33.7 and 32.6 percent respectively uh, along with rural poverty urban poverty is also high in odisha madhya pradesh bihar and uttar pradesh in comparison there has been a significant decline in poverty in kerala maharashtra andhra pradesh tamil nadu gujarat and west bengal states like punjab and haryana have traditionally succeeded in reducing poverty with help of high agricultural growth rates kerala has focused more on human resource development in west bengal land reform measures have helped in reducing poverty in andhra pradesh and tamil nadu public distribution of food grains would have been responsible for the improvement global poverty scenario the proportion of people in different countries living in extreme economic poverty defined by the world bank as living on less than 1.9 dollar per day has fallen from 36% in 1990 to 10% in 2050 although there has been a substantial reduction in global poverty it is marked with great regional differences poverty declined substantially in china and southeast asian countries as a result of rapid economic growth and massive investment in human resource development number of poor in china has come down from 88.3% in 1981 to 14.7% in 2008 to 0.6% in 2019 in the countries of south asia like india pakistan sri lanka nepal bangladesh bhutan the decline has also been rapid 34% in 2005 to 15.2% in 2040 with decline in the percentage of the poor the number of poor has also declined significantly from 510.4 million in 2005 to 274.5 million in 2013 because of the different poverty line definition poverty in india is also shown higher than the national estimates in sub saharan africa poverty in fact declined from 51% in 2005 to 40.2% in 2008 see graph 3.3 in latin america the ratio of poverty has also declined from 10% in 2005 to 4% in 2018 see graph 3.3 poverty has also resurfaced in some of the former socialist countries like russia where officially it was non existent earlier table 3.2 shows the proportion of people living under poverty in different countries as defined by the international poverty line that means population below 1.9 dollar But the new sustainable development goals of the united nations proposes ending poverty of all types by 2030 let's discuss study the graph 3.4 and do the following identify the areas of the world where poverty ratios have declined identify the area of the globe which has the largest concentration of the poor poverty head count ratio comparison among some selected countries nigeria bangladesh india pakistan china brazil indonesia sri lanka source poverty and equity database world bank data causes of poverty there were a number of causes for the pov- widespread poverty in india one historical reason is the 
लो लेवल ऑफ इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट अंडर द ब्रिटिश कॉलोनियल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन द पॉलिसीज ऑफ द कॉलोनियल गवर्नमेंट रूइंड ट्रेडिशनल हैंडीक्राफ्ट एंड डिस्करेज डेवलपमेंट ऑफ इंडस्ट्रीज लाइक टेक्सटाइल्स द लो रेट ऑफ ग्रोथ परसिस्टेड अंटिल द नाइनटीन एटीज रिजल्टेड इन द लेस जॉब अपॉर्चुनिटीज एंड लो ग्रोथ रेट ऑफ इनकम्स दिस वॉज ए कंपनीड बाई ए हाई ग्रोथ रेट ऑफ पॉपुलेशन द टू कंबाइन टू मेक द ग्रोथ रेट ऑफ पर कैपिटल इनकम वेरी लो द फेल्योर एट बोध द फ्रंट्स प्रमोशन ऑफ इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ एंड पॉपुलेशन कंट्रोल परपेचुएटेड द साइकिल ऑफ पॉवर्टी विद द स्प्रेड ऑफ इरीगेशन एंड द ग्रीन रिवोल्यूशन मेनी जॉब अपॉर्चुनिटीज वे आर क्रिएटेड इन द एग्रीकल्चर सेक्टर बट द इफेक्ट वे आर लिमिटेड टू सम पार्ट ऑफ इंडिया द इंडस्ट्रीज बोध इन द पब्लिक एंड द प्राइवेट सेक्टर डिट प्रोवाइड सम जॉब बट दीज वर नॉट एनफ टू एब्जॉर्ब ऑल द जॉब सीकर अनएबल टू फाइंड प्रॉपर जॉब इन द सिटीज मेनी पीपल स्टार्टेड वर्किंग एज रिक्शा पुलर्स वेंडर्स कंस्ट्रक्शन वर्कर्स डोमेस्टिक सर्वेंट्स एट्सेट्रा With irregular small incomes, these people could not afford expensive housing. They started living in slums on the outskirts of the city, and the problems of poverty, largely a rural phenomenon, also became the feature of the urban sector. Another feature of high poverty rates has been the huge inequality. One of the major reasons for this is the unequal distribution of land and other resources. Despite many policies, we have not been able to tackle the issue in a meaningful manner. Major policy initiatives like land reforms, which aimed at redistribution of assets in rural areas, have not been implemented properly and effectively by most of the state governments. Since lack of land resources. has been one of the major causes of poverty in india proper implementation of policy could have improved the life of millions of rural poor many other socio cultural and economic factors also are responsible for poverty in order to fulfill social obligations and absorb religious ceremonies people in india including the very poor spend a lot of money small farmers need money to buy agricultural inputs like seeds fertilizers pesticides etc since poor people hardly have any savings they borrow unable to repay because of poverty they become victims of indebtedness so the high level of indebtedness in both the cause and effect of poverty anti poverty measures removal of poverty has been one of the major objectives of indian development strategy the current anti poverty strategies of the government is based broadly on two plans first the promotion of economic growth second targeted anti poverty programs over a period of 30 years lasting up to the early 80s there were little per capita income growth and not much reduction in poverty official poverty estimates which were about 45% in the early 1950s remained the same even in the early 80s since the 80s india's economic growth has been one of the fastest in the world the growth rate jumped from the average of about 3.5% a year in the 1970s to about 6% during the 1980s and 1990s the higher growth rates have helped significantly in the reduction of poverty therefore it is becoming clear that there is a strong link between economic growth and poverty reduction economic growth widens opportunities and provides the resources needed to invest in human development this also in people to send their children including the girl child to schools in the hope of getting better economic returns from investing in education however the poor 
may not be able to take direct advantage from the opportunities created by the economy moreover growth in the agriculture sector is much below expectations this has a direct bearing on poverty as a large number of poor people live in villages and are dependent on agriculture in these circumstances there is a clear need for targeted anti poverty programs although there are so many schemes which are formulated to affect poverty directly or indirectly some of them are worth mentioning mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act 2005 that is manrega aims to provide 100 days of wage employment to every household to ensure livelihood security in rural areas it is also aimed at sustainable development to address the cause of drought deforestation and soil erosion one third of the proposed jobs have been reserved for women the scheme provided employment to 220 crores persons days of employment to 4.78 crore households the share of sc st women person days in the scheme are 23% 17% and 53% respectively the average has increased from 35 in 2006 to 132 in 2013-14 recently in march 2018 the wage rate for unskilled manual workers has been revised the state wise the range of wage rate for different states and union territories lies in between 281 rupees per day to 68 rupees per day prime minister rozgar yojana pmry is another scheme which was started in 1993 the aim of the program is to create self employment opportunities for educated unemployed youth in rural areas and small towns they are helped in setting up small business and industries rural employment generation program regp was launched in 1995 the aim of the program is to create self employment opportunities in rural areas and small towns a target for creating 25 lakh new jobs has been set for the program under the 10th five year plan swarn jayanti gram swarajgar yojana sgsy was launched in 1999 the program aims at bringing the assisted poor families above the poverty line by organizing them into self help groups shg through a mix of bank credit and government subsidy under the pradhan mantri gramodaya yojana pmgy launched in 2000 additional central assistance is given to states for basic services such as primary health primary education rural shelter rural drinking water and rural electrification another important scheme is antyodaya ann yojana aay about which you will be reading more in the next chapter the result of these programs have been mixed one of the major reasons for less effectiveness is the lack of proper implementation and right targeting moreover there has been a lot of overlapping of schemes despite good intentions the benefits of these schemes are not fully reached to the deserved therefore the major emphasis in recent year is on proper monitoring of all the poverty alleviation programs the challenges ahead the poverty has certainly declined in india but despite the progress a poverty reduction remains india's most compelling challenge wide disparities in poverty are visible between rural and urban areas and among different states certain social economic groups are more vulnerable 
to poverty poverty reduction is expected to make better progress in the next 10 to 15 years this would be possible mainly due to higher economic growth increasing stress on universal free elementary education declining population growth increasing empowerment of the women and the economically weaker sections of society the official definition of poverty however captures only a limited part of what poverty really means to people it is about a minimum subsistence level of living rather than a reasonable level of living many scholars advocate that we must broaden the concept into human poverty a large number of people may have been able to feed themselves but do they have education or shelter or health care or job security or self-confidence or they free from caste and gender discrimination is the practice of child labor still common worldwide experience shows that with development the definition of what constitutes poverty also changes eradication of poverty is always a moving target hopefully we will be able to provide the minimum necessary in terms of only income to all people by the end of the next decade but the target will move on for many of the bigger challenges that still remain providing health care education and job security for all and achieving gender equality and the dignity for the poor these will be even bigger tasks summary you have seen in this chapter that poverty has many dimensions normally this is measured through the concept of poverty line through this concept we analyzed main global and national trends in poverty but in recent years the analysis of poverty is becoming rich through a variety of new concepts like social exclusion similarly the challenge is becoming bigger as scholars are broadening the concept into human poverty exercises first describe how the poverty line is estimated in india second do you think that present methodology of poverty estimation is appropriate third describe poverty trends in india since 1973 fourth discuss the major reasons for poverty in india five identify the social and economic groups which are most vulnerable to poverty in india six give an account of interstate disparities of poverty in india seven describe global poverty trends eight describe current government strategy of poverty alleviation nine answer the following questions briefly first what do you understand by human poverty who are the poorest of the poor what are the main features of the national rural employment guarantee act 2005 